Good afternoon, everyone. It is a rainy day here in Tennessee. A great day to be sitting curled up with a book. And I thought I would do a book haul for you today. Yeah, it's all used books. I love when this happens. So we took our granddaughter out to McKay's bookstore in Nashville for part of her 13th birthday celebration because she is a book fanatic, and boy, howdy, did she have fun. I gave her a $30 limit, and she got, I think, 30 books for 30 bucks. So I thought I'd show you what I came home with. I was thrilled with what I found. So I got this, the Matisse by A.S. Byatt. Is that how you say her name? I've been interested in her as an author. I've seen some on BookTube um, highly praising her. I love the first story in here. At first, I didn't really care for it, but then the way it ended up, I, it was great. And so I'm on the second story on that one. I'm actually reading this one right now. And then I also got the, tr I think this is a trilogy, uh, the Virgin in the garden, still life and Babel tower. So I'm interested in diving into that. Now this book, the end of your book, the end of your life book club by Will Schwalb. I bought this a few years ago and read it and loved it and I made all these annotations in it and I was up in North Dakota at my daughter's house. When I when I go there they have some they have a friends for the library and another awesome uh, thrift shop that just you can get books for 25 cents and 50 cents so I had bags of books and I couldn't take them all home. So she was storing them for me. It froze up there a little bit. So she was storing for them for me. So when I went back the next time to get them, she's like, oh, mom, I got tired of those hanging around. I took them to the thrift store. I'm like, you did what? I, I could never annotate it again like I did the first time. But anyway, that's what that's the way it goes. I found this for 50 cents at McKay's um, book, bookstore. I was thrilled. So I'm, I've actually started reading it again, too. I'm that far and let's see, did I start annotating it? I don't think I've started. No, I haven't started annotating it, but it'll get annotated. So, even though I've read it, I'm reading it again. It's that good. This is My New Orleans Gone Away by Peter M. Wolf. And it's a memoir. Uh, sog it's a true saga of family burden escaping the ties that binds. Takes us from the south to New England and to Paris and back. So that sounds like it's right up my alley. The Dressmaker of Carcana. I've been wanting this book for a long time, especially because I'm a seamstress. Uh, five sisters, one remarkable family, and the woman who risked everything to keep them safe. Again, 50 cents. This section, is it uh, something nonfiction? It's a memoir section. It's kind of titled nonfiction novel or something it's called. It's it's a different thing, and it's kind of at the back of the store. And I had, I had, I had never been to that section before, so I was thrilled to find that. Everybody Was So Young by Amanda Vale. I love the 1920s jazz period, especially over in France and all these people, Gerald and Sarah Murphy and Fitzgerald and Hemingway. I love reading about them. So that was only 75 cents. And then this is an author I read years ago and who helped shape my writing and I love her, Natalie Goldberg. And I'm really into art now and painting thus the Matisse book and studying authors and this is her living color this is about her actually creating her own art so not about her usual writing life but her art life so I was thrilled to find that and then this one the painter by Peter Heller I've never heard anything about this uh, it looked it sounded interesting though celebrated painter ardent fisherman and homespun philosopher philosoph philosopher narrates this masterful novel in which love, artistic vision, guilt, grief, and spine-chilling danger propel a suspenseful plot. He explores the mysteries of the human heart and creates an indelible portrait of a man searching for peace. So that, that sounded really good. Never heard of him. Now, Mae Sarton, I love her nonfiction, and I, I've read pretty much all of it. Well, I found one of her fiction, The Poet and the Donkey, and her memoirs are interesting because she talks about the fiction that she's writing in her memoirs, and I've never read any of her fiction, so I'm interested to try that out. This one's The War at Home, A Wife's Search for Peace and Other Missions Impossible. 
I live in a military town. You guys kind of know our background. Us, my daughter losing her soldier over there in Afghanistan days before they were supposed to get married. So I'm always interested in stories like that. Paris in Love by Elo Eloisa James. 50 cents for a hardback, a memoir. I love books about Paris, especially memoirs with women going over there. And then here's another Gertrude Stein, the autobiography of Alice B. Toklas. Again, the 1920s jazz period over there in Paris. Now, I have never read any Amy Tan, but I picked up this book from the library a couple of times in the last few months and didn't wasn't able to get to it and so returned it. But it was it's her, a book of her musings. It's um different different things just it's not truly memoir writing it's more like essays and notes and stuff like that and I found it for 75 cents in hardback so I was thrilled to find that and then I also found the joy luck club by her which you've all a lot of you probably read I've never read this so I'm excited to dive into that and then here's this is a national bestseller the lives of the muses nine women and the artists they inspired I thought that sounded really cool by Francine Prose I like her her writing she she writes about, is it reading or reading like a professor or, uh, I don't know. But anyway, excited for that one. Uh, this looked kind of fun. Notes from the Underwire, Adventures from My Awkward and Lovely Life by Quinn Cummings. Uh, yeah. Meet Quinn Cummings, former child star, mother and modern woman. She wants to be a good person. She grew up in Los Angeles. A city whose patron saint would be a 16-year-old with a gold card and two trips to rehab under her belt. So that kind of sounded fun and different. Uh, Raising the Bar, Big Dreams, False Starts, and My Midlife Quest to Dance the Nutcracker. That's another one I found back in that section that just sounded fun. Lauren Kessler. She's an award-winning writer and immersion reporter. The author of nine narrative nonfiction books. I'm excited to try that one out. And let's see, we have The Glitter and the Gold, The American Duchess in Her Own Words by Consuelo Vanderbilt Balson. I love reading about the queens over in England. And I don't, well, this is over here. It says, The Ninth Duchess gives unique hand, first hand insight into the life at the very pinnacle of English society in the Edwardian area, era. Madame Bovary, this is another one I picked up from the library that I'd never read before, and I really enjoyed it, but I had to return it to the library. I didn't have any more time on it. So when I saw this, this is a really nice um, copy for two bucks, just in really good condition. I, I've been on the hunt for, for that book. Q's Legacy, a delightful account of a lifelong love affair with books. I love reading books about books. And this is Helene Hamp. Now listen to this one. If any of you have read 84 Charing, Charing Cross Road, here is the remarkable story of how Helene Hamp came to write 84 Charing Cross Road, and of all the things its successes brought, and of all the things its success brought her. Hamp recalls her serendipitous discovery of a volume of lectures by a Cambridge don. She devoured Q's book and, wanting to read all the books he recommended, began to order them from a small store in London at 84 Charing Cross Road. Thus began a correspondence that became an enormously popular book, play, television, production, and movie, and that finally led to the trip to England and a visit to Q's study that she recounts here in this exuberant memoir. Haunt pays her debt to her mentor and shares her joyous ad adventures with her many fans. So, yeah, that, that one I'm super excited about. And then this one is Sydney and Violet by Stephen Claydman, their life with T.S. Eliot, Proust, Proust, however you say that, Joyce, and the excruciatingly irascible Wyndham Lewis so bygone authors that looked kind of fun and it was only 75 cents for a hardback in perfect condition now I, I don't have the book that I've re read recently that I absolutely adored it's called Georgia oh I can't it, it's it's this author I can't even think of her name that's terrible I'll list it in the box below she took all. She read all her biographies and and stuff written about her, and then she wrote a a novel about it in uh, fiction. And it was oh, it was so good. It was so good. So I've been on the hunt to to find more about Georgia O'Keeffe. 
I don't really care for her art. I, it was amazing reading about her and how she started doing things in her art that had never done been done before, and that part fascinated me. But and I love reading about artists' lives, writers' lives. This one's portrait of an artist, a biography of George O'Keefe by Lori Lori Lizel Lizel. And then I found O'Keefe and Stieglitz, an American romance by Benita Eisler. This was 75 cents. Those is, so this is about her and her love affair with this man. And that book, Georgia, I have to say, very erotic. I don't think I've ever read a more erotic book, but and I'm not into that, but you know, it was it was part of the storyline. But anyway, and then this is Becoming O'Keefe, the early years, and this was only a dollar fifty. And this is by Sarah Whitaker Peters. So I, I was thrilled to find some on her. So that is my book haul of late. I, I've kind of gotten away from reading these last few months and I'm really missing it. So I have a question for my viewers. I want to know if you would like me to, I actually have another YouTube account set up called John Lee's Reads and Teas. I was going to separate out my books and tea into one channel and leave the other one for the journaling and planning and just life. And I would like to keep it all together, but I know a lot of people like it divvied out. So let me know in the comments what you all prefer in YouTube channels. Do you like it all together or do you like it separated out? And I will take a consensus and go from there. So I too would love to know what you guys are reading. And if you're reading something fantastic, please let me know. I'm really into reading about artists' lives right now and what made them tick and um, what their art meant to them. And yeah, that's kind of really intriguing me right now. So I hope you're all having a fantastic day. I'm going to get this uploaded and do some more filming for my class. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.